Welcome to Ido Canals. How about this? This is the Anderton Lift. It allows boats to travel from the Trent and Mersey to the River Weaver. It replaced a rather archaic method of transporting salt from the largest salt works in the country, just up the top here, down into waiting boats and out that way. And they would send the, show, send the salt down chutes to the boats and somebody down the boats would level it out so they didn't sink the boats and off they would go. Backbreaking work, took an awful long time. So this was designed by Edwin Clark and it was completed in 1875 and significantly sped up the process by which cargo, mostly salt, could be transported around. Northwich is just over here. The name Northwich, which means salt town. And here you've also got Middlewich and Nantwich and other salt towns areas. This was a huge salt area. There were brine lakes and masses and masses of salt were extracted from the lakes and the ground and transported all over the world and mostly the country for all kinds of uses, not just eating and, so, and flavoring your food. Stunning. The fact that you can still use this today is amazing. It's gone through a few different guises and we'll talk about that. By the end of the 17th century, a major salt mining industry had grown and developed around the Cheshire salt towns of Northwich, Middlewich and Nantwich. Incidentally, which means salt town, W-I-C-H. The industry has ages old history in the area, right back to Roman times, and much later at Winsford, hence the lack of which in that town's name. The River Weaver navigation was completed in 1734, and the Trenton Mersey opened in 1777. The owners of the two waterways collaborated to maximise the transshipment of goods, including salt, between the two waterways. Before the boat lift, there was numerous wooden chutes, at least three inclined planes and cranes, all used to move the goods up and down. As trade increased, better efficiency was needed. The Anderton boat lift was commissioned by Edward Leader Williams, possibly inspired by the hydraulic ship lift and graving dock at Royal Victoria Dock in London. He appointed Edwin Clark as the principal designer. The boat lift was completed in 1875 and worked by means of two caissons supported on hydraulic rams, each of which could take two narrow boats or a wide beam. The quantity of boats or their weight didn't matter because any floating object in a tank or caisson displaces its own weight in water, making the two caissons weigh the same. Once both caissons were loaded with boats, a little water was drained from the lower one. This would allow the upper caisson to outweigh the lower and descend, raising the other up in the process. This first method of operation lasted just into the 20th century, using the water from the River Weaver. Salt corrosion had a continuous and detrimental effect on the cast iron. Stoppages were common and something needed to be done. For a while, distilled water was used in the hydraulic rams. This slowed the corrosion but failed to stop it. Chief Engineer Colonel John Arthur Sainer was appointed to investigate. He came up with a new and improved method of working the boat lift. Sainer proposed electric motors with a system of counterweights. This all worked with a complex system of gears and pulleys. The new system also meant that the caissons could operate independently of each other. Although more complex, everything except the caissons was above ground and beyond the corrosive salt water. It also took less crew to operate the machinery. Today, a modified version of the hydraulic system has been reinstated. The gears and pulleys remain in place but are not operational. The counterweights that were once used are now arranged to form a rather attractive maze in the children's play area. Moored up there by the grass is the boat the Edwin Clark and it's the visitor centre's tour boat that makes trips up and down the Anderton boat lift. It also takes passengers off into Northwich and back. In this aerial view, you can see the multitude of pulleys and wheels that rest atop of the massive cast iron frame. It was these wheels that used the counterbalance weights, which you can also see upper mid right of this image that form the children's maze. This was the second incarnation of the Anderton boat lift, and, and for a while it was the most busiest as well. Behind the pulleys and wheels, you can see the two entrance aqueduct troughs that allow access and exit from and to the lift into the 
Trent and Mersey Canal, which is just coming up there as we look. The water you can see cascading up there is coming from the Trent and Mersey Canal. The guillotine gates don't offer a perfectly tight seal and some water gets through. Chap say smashed it and that doesn't mean he's broken it. <laughs> what do you reckon gents? Marks out of ten? Not bad. <laughs> no bumps. Whilst taking the boat crews aboard Edwin Clark, we were asked to not stick our cameras out of the open windows and also to not dangle out the windows ourselves with said cameras as it was going to be dangerous. So apologies for the lack of great detail.
Uh, you might notice the bouncing steering wheel uh, later on. As we descended, um, we were literally bouncing up and down, oscillating up and down with the movement of the caisson. On our way back from Northwich on the Edwin Clark, one of the crew pointed out these apple trees and he mentioned that the boaters, whilst uh, leading a horse along the bank, might be eating an apple and they would usually give the core to the horse, who would then scoff it and at some point eject it out the other end, all wrapped in dung. So beautifully fertilised apple seeds turn into these trees and apparently some of them are delicious. A bit further on, as we're going down the River Weaver, there are two lock gates leaning up against the bank. Apparently they've been there for years and years and years. They were made specially for a lock in Northwich and when they were fitted, uh, they didn't, like a normal pair of lock gates, form a chevron when, the, when they were closed and the water was pressing against. They, per they, they closed in a perfectly straight line. So um, the pressing water on the upper side just pushed the gates open. Uh, somebody was very, very embarrassed when they made those gates and they were so heavy and have made such a tough wood, they just left them there and they'll be there probably longer than I will be. These shots are of lots of the old parts of the Anderton lift after several renovations, etc. And they just put them here after painting them up in the flower beds for you to look at. Oh, and we just happened to pass by these pair of mating swans and their children. What a stunning day that was. That's another tick in our list of iconic places on the canal network. The Anderton boat lift. Came to see it, videoed boats going in and out, up and down, the machinery, the history, all of the parts of the old lift that's in the area to, to go and see, absolutely awesome. And then I met Dave, and he's a volunteer for CNRT, and he, he talked me into joining the last trip of the day. I thought, yeah, a good idea. And he also said, get this, go and buy this. So, so look, it's the a guide to the Andrew boat lift. It's a good read, loads of history, loads of photographs, very, very well, worth the five quid, honestly. And the money goes towards the upkeep. So, what I didn't know, when I boarded the boat, was we're, not only were we going down the lift, but we were going to Northwich as well and back again. So it took nearly an hour. So this means I'm late. Karen will be cross. She's not here today. She got crisped in the sun yesterday, frazzled, and a bad head with it all. So she took a day out. But I'll be in trouble when I get back. I'll probably have to bribe her with more wine. Who, who knows? It's medicinal, of course. If you're thinking of coming, car park just here. Two pound for three hours, three pound for all day. There's parks and woodlands and all sorts to go and see too. This is a must see. Bring the kids, bring the family. It's thoroughly interesting, absolutely enthralling. And you know, bring something to feed to the ducks and all the swans. Rice Krispies, I'm told, is good because bread isn't good for them. Before, before I waffle on all night, thanks for watching. Press the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to push the notification bell and you'll get told about our next video. And Karen and I will be back soon. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.